What? It's our lady. No. Hey, uh, no. 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 Oh, hold on, Sarah. Say it again. Hi, I'm Gail Brick, and I'll be teaching you to box. See, all you do is push this. Try it. Mm, see, it's easy. Yeah. And our and when we were in, in or when we were at our place, we did it in square bars. We didn't do it in straight lines. Well, now you do do it in straight lines. Get used to it. Okay. Not so bad, huh? Mm, I'm getting the hang of it. Hey guys, you guys, you guys owe, owe us fifty dollars. We just already? paid you that. We just yeah. paid you already. Yeah, but yesterday it just came to you when we food. Okay. It was fifty dollars. I guess. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. See ya. Bye. Bye. Okay, this is the Bible. Would you like to be a Christian? Why? Because. Because then when you, you do bad things, like when you pull his hair, like this, when you do <laughs> that. Yeah. Okay. Jesus, Jesus died for you on the cross. He died and for you, and then now he, he says, it's heaven. okay. He forgives you for pulling his hair. But why do we have to learn these Christian ways? Be because then you will go to heaven with him instead of down here. Okay. Okay. So would you like to be a Christian? Sure. Sure. Here. You can have that. Thank you. This is when he was born, right? Matthew 2. Yeah. And he died. 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 And this part of the In one. There is a path. straight rolls. Hmm. Why'd they change to white wings? It's so much easier to do it our way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the white people just come over and then they just switch their traditions. Yeah. Kind of weird. All right, what traditions? Here's your creative money. Oh, thanks. Here's your little packet. I hate those farm Dakota. That's why I give them less money. I give, I hate those traditional Dakota. They like do things weird and those farm Dakota, they rock. Indian socks. So yeah. They're so stupid. I know. <laughs> 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 
What other drink would you use instead of hot cocoa? Or I want to use a drink. Well, we have, in the summer we'd probably sell lemonade and hot chocolate. So we'd probably... At the end of the summer, we'd probably have holes on the hot chocolate. And then we'd start going In spring and fall, we'd probably have both. One last question. Thank you very much. Good presentation. Uh, this is our logo right here. And uh, 
what we do is provide services to the people. Our poster that we would put up says we take care of your kids while working out or while you are enjoying a massage or taking yoga classes. Um, our logo stands for K, Kirsten, J, JC, and B, Billy. This is a floor plan of our building that we already found. And it has a weight room, a nursery, a swimming pool, a tennis court, a rock climbing wall, a basketball court, a track, three jacuzzis, two saunas, a yoga class, an employee room, a massage room, and a kitchen. The kitchen is for the butlers because if you are a member, you get a free. Um, you don't get a free butler, but you have to pay twenty dollars monthly fee for a butler. And our building would cost five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. And some of our highlighted things over here. Well, they're all highlighted, but we have lots of gym equipment such as treadmills, steppers, bikes, and skiers, and then weight systems, and lots of rock climbing equipment like harnesses and shoes. Our, um, our total for our, our building is 500, total for all of the items is 28,249. And then these are our prices or pay to our workers and what you have to pay to get in. And this is what it looks from the outside front. It's catchy because it's like neon. Yeah. And not many buildings around here are neon. All the are at the And our building will last. For a yeah. Time. Okay, any questions? Mitchell, how much will you need overall to start your business with? Uh, about 500,000. About 600,000. Yeah, about 600,000. Sarah? Sarah. When do you plan on opening? About 24, five years. <laughs> well, it'll take us Yeah, we're not quite old much. enough to manage exactly. this place, yeah. so about 25 years. We'll get a lot of people to help us. Yeah. A lot of Maybe the whole class. Oh, shh. How will you plan on making all that money? With all of the fees and the for a massage, it's $10 for one. Butlers are expensive. Yeah, but so we will lower the prices as soon as we get more money. Yeah. yeah. Lindsay? Would the, all the expenses, would that include, well, when you get the building, would it be painted or would you have to include the paint? Yeah. Zach? Um, well, it's kind of too big, sorry. Do you do Pilates? No, you already asked. <laughs> And second, okay, we'll go to Lindsay. Okay, um, and then did your total expenses include the building, or was it just for the items? Like um, the items um, were included with the building when we said our grand total. No, yeah, because. So you're buying, you're like buying a building that's already been made, or you're making a new building. We are actually buying one uh, on eBay. <laughs> Did you find one? Yeah, yeah. And and how it much? Looks somewhat like this. And one. how much was it? Uh, as much as our five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Andy, um, do you have a swimming pool? Yes. 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 Great right here. Yeah. In it's a weird track. shape. It's cool. Yeah, Allie. So you have hall hallways to get to things? Yes. Well, there's basically just doors. And it's, the, basically it's basically one main room, except there are a couple doors to go to places. And there's space. And then the basement. One more question. Uh, Zach. OK. 
Okay. How much would it cost to make the swimming pool? Uh, uh, let's um, see. Swimming right here. Eight thousand six hundred ninety-five dollars. Thank you, KJB. Yeah, KJB. This is called Girl Stop, and uh, we we sell to anyone who comes by, except for boys, because it's called Girl Stop. And then this is the place from the outside, and then this is the inside the floor plan, and every place is in a different shape and then these are our prices and like some of them like the shoes are like fifteen dollars and then like hair stuff is ten dollars the purses are twenty five dollars and the locker room access is twenty five dollars and Right, we hand out flyers to everyone. It's called Fun Bashing Dirty Girl Stuff. And it's located in Eden. And then we also did a commercial. Well, the TV's coming on. Do you want to tell the investors about what other things you can do at Girl Stop? And then.
Okay, um, Kayla, why did you start this business? Because we thought that, like, you can go to the Mall of America and get stuff, but boys are allowed there too, so we wanted a place just for girls. Okay, um, Kirsten? Can boys go there to get gifts for their girlfriends or wives? Well, they can go to the entrance right there, and then they can tell somebody what they want, and then they can get it, but they can't go in. Okay, um, Kyle? How will you make all that money to buy your stuff? Well, we're going to start an opening for it, and hopefully you'll invest in our product, and we'll start out, like, opening day, we'll have, like, more stuff, like, for kids, like two-year-olds, well, their moms, their sisters, look around the place, and that'll cost money. Um, Allie? Um, so, you, are you going to have workers? Yeah, we pay the workers a dollar an hour. You can't do that. Okay. Can you do Okay, never mind. Seven dollars an hour. <laughs> um, Ashley. Uh, okay, Zachary. Last question. Okay, if you're going to pay them ten dollars an hour, if you were going to pay them one dollar an hour, how are you going to get employees? <laughs> and how many employees will we need? Well, it depends on how many people come to our place, and yeah, then we'll go from there. Like on opening day. We'll see how many people come, and then we'll just base it on that. And then we'll try and get more, and then we'll pay them more. Okay, our business is a fountain of youth, beauty, and tanning salon. Okay, fountain of youth, beauty, and tanning salon. That's the name of our business. And we are selling to people who want to look pretty, not ugly. And <laughs> these are our prices. And like glass is seventeen dollars and face cream is eighteen ninety five and a curling iron is nineteen ninety nine and nail polish is one forty nine. Yeah. And, and um, this is our floor plan. Like Yeah. We have one big hallway right here. Yeah. And um Oh, this is what we bought our things for, and then this is what we're going to sell for. Yeah. Any other highlights of it you want to tell us? I mean. Um, what, like, castle players? Yeah. That look like that. Why did you decide?
to do this with this one? Um, because we need to do something that lots of people want and lots of girls want me to Jack? Do you have any workers? Yeah. Right. Yeah. How much will you pay them? A few minimum wage. Pictures would be twenty-six dollars. Flyers would be five or five dollars and eighty cents. Extras like sugar and stuff were twelve dollars, and cups were eighteen dollars. And we already have a stand, an ice, and an umbrella right here. And um, the prices of the beverages would be for a small cup you'd get fifty cent would be fifty cents. Medium a dollar, large one fifty, and a whopper would be two dollars. And for coffee, it would be one dollar, medium two dollars, a large three dollars, and a whopper four dollars. And this is our logo again. And we're selling to anybody who wants to who walks through the park. This is a track park. Any questions? Yeah. I bet you had coffee. Um, how would you get out? There's a microwave And we have a coffee maker too. But how would you get to do it? We have, so if it was by our house, we have a little extension cord and an out. So it's trap part by your house. Anybody who walks in the park and do you take children all the time? No. That. Um. How much will it cost for the electricity? Electricity, our parents will pay. <laughs> yeah. I won't use that much electricity. Just for the cops. Kayla, why did you decide to do this? Well, you know, there's always one name stands. But why can't there be a variety? Yeah. When are you going to start your business? Probably this summer. Yeah, this summer. Billy. Since, since your business is in a park, how would you get the power? Well, we won't have to use it that often. It's because we'll have it ready made. But when we do, I can spike back to the um, will you have employees? Well, if our business gets big, we will. Yeah, we might put like three three stands around the park or something. Yeah. Um, does it run during winter? Yes. So it's only part time. Thank you. Good job. This is our business. It's called
called Candy Mountain and it's a candy store. And these are our flyers that we will put all over the town. And the costs and prices of our candies and our shelves and stuff that we need to get for it. And all together, um, all this is $629.37. And we pay our, or we pay our employees $10.50 an hour. And uh, that's our building. It is $2,500 for it because we have to pay it. Yeah. And And um, our total cost for everything that we're going to need, including the building, is Thank you. 
How do you get, how do you heat up the water on what electricity? Um, we have a water heater for it. My great grandpa, when he choked, when he died. Good job. My story is about 
when my great, when my grandma almost cut her fingers off with a pen. It's too hot in here. I'm gonna die of the heat. Don't touch it, don't touch it. <laughs> and the moral of the story is safety's first. <laughs> Good job. Wait, the story of me trying to get my nail polish remover when I stood on the toilet with my socks on and I slipped off. Mom, can I go get the pol uh, nail polish remover? Oh, well, sure, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'll rush you to the hospital immediately. Come on. And the moral of the story is don't uh, get, uh, don't stand on the toilet with uh, socks on. Or have a don't stand on Good job. And we... My turn. Lindsay. Good moral. This is a story of me when I get a new helmet and I want to try it out down at my cabin down the big hill. Did the helmet work? No. Oh. And my moral is always wear a safe helmet. <laughs> my story is about um, when my aunt was little, she um, got bit by a dog. And now we won't. Oh. 
can regrow the crops, even though half of them are gone. That end. <laughs> and the moral is don't play with matches. I, th I didn't know you were actually going to work. Don't play with is don't play with matches un unless unless you are someone who's older. Good job. Just a cow. Just a cow. <laughs> and the moral of the story is, is that it's okay to tell somebody you're perfect. Gotcha. Oh, you need to come go. back. Yeah, you're supposed to come back. back. We're not done taping. My story is about when my mom was little and she got 10 cents from her mom and she biked down to the um, drugstore to get an ice cream sandwich and on the way back she hit an old lady and Aaron is the old lady in the play and Zach is my mom's dad so okay mom I'm going to get an ice cream sandwich at the drugstore okay Billy and then Here's my ice cream sandwich. So she put it in her wire basket on the front of her bike. And while she was going home, she watched the ice cream sandwich instead of where she was going. Backyard. 
<laughs> Would you like a sandwich here? Sure. Could you make it for me? Sure. <laughs> la, 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 la. Here it is. Thank you. Did you eat the sandwich? Yeah, it was delicious. That's good. Now you can now you can go get it from under the oak tree and eat it. How did you know? Am I in trouble? Yes, you're grounded for one week. And the moral of the story is, if you ask someone for a sandwich, always make sure you know what they're gonna make you, and um, always be truthful. Good job, man. And that is your two. One. Action. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'll tell you a story of when my dad used um, shot BB gun at his sister's butt. I'm, I'm, I'm my dad, and she's, and she's my dad's sister. <laughs> and the moral of the story is never hit uh, never try to hit someone um, with a gun even though it's a fake gun. And our scene two is when Bill returns home. Bye. Bye. 
Bye. Yeah, and then the train comes and takes me away. Yeah. Hey, friend. Like, it's night time. Let's get home. Hold my hand. Now, time to sit and wait. Three nights later. And how's we gonna get our uh, turkeys in that store? <laughs> we just, we just get gone through their dark window. <laughs> Winter. <laughs> In the summer of 1851, Steamboat Excelsior carried a group of Americans, including Alexander Ramsey and Henry Sibley, up to the Minnesota River, a place called Traverse de Sioux. They were met by hundreds of Native Americans, especially the Dakota, and they were welcomed there, and they came to make a treaty. Stephen Riggs, the missionary, was also there. After meeting and discussing things for the first day, they left to start the treaty process the next day. July 18th, 1851. The treaty making gets down officially to business. Alexander Ramsey led the delegation and formally welcomed the Dakota nations of the Sisseton and Wapiton bands. He talked about what the president told him. The president has sent me. He told me that you are hungry. So I'm willing to trade your land for goods and money and food. The Dakotas talked it over amongst themselves, but said nothing. They weren't making a deal today. And they adjourned for the day. July 19, 1851. The council decided to try to meet again today. An elder named Wechunk Patehi, or Starface, was the first Dakota to speak to the council. We do not want to make a trade until all, all of our young men in our tribe come. And yet another elder, Istahaba, or Sleepy Eyes, he also seemed reluctant. You are coming and asking me for my land makes me sad. And you are coming and saying that we cannot do anything with our land makes me still more sad. I will not speak until my young relatives come. That is all I have to say. They were so upset they began to leave the council. And Ramsey threatened to end negotiations. And because of... The because they were so mad, they decided to take a day to cool off. July 20th, 1851. On this day off, the Dakota met to discuss things about the council. I do not think we should make this trade. Yes, maybe they are trying to scam us. No, they are good men. We should sign it. I'm not sure yet. How do you know? We have already seen them a few times. We should not sign it. We should wait longer. Okay. Yes. And over on the other camp, the U.S. government was talking as well. We must, we must play our piece as well. Then they will trade with us. Yes. July 21st, 1851. After their day off, they decided to try negotiations again. 
both sides wanted to see what would happen. Another Dakota leader, Upia Dehea, or extended tail feathers, talked to the council that today. This treaty you talked about, we should write it down on paper. Ram Ramsey and Dakota agreed, and they adjourned for the day. July 22nd, 1851. The Dakota spent the morning considering the offer that Ramsey had made. And Stephen Riggs even showed up to help them translate it. It says that it will give you food and shelter and money if you make the trade to your land. Thanks to the help of Stephen Riggs, they came to a decision. Across the way, the U.S. government again had their own ideas. The fur traders also came along to help the Henry sibling Alexander Ramsey figure out a way to get them to sign. We're gonna, we're gonna convince them and say, if you guys trade, if you guys do the treaty, we'll trade with you. Okay. Yeah. We won't get more. Yes. Okay. Oh. 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 23rd, 1851. After much discussion and agreement, they both sides come together again. The Dakota still have some things to say. I want a copy for my Dakota tribe. I hope this treaty you speak of. I hope they keep their mouth. Yes. Even with some, some questions, the Dakota agreed to sign, and Alexander Ramsey and Sibley lead them over to the treaty to sign. The two government officials signed first. And slowly, one by one, the Dakota take their time signing, even with questions in their mind. The fur traders are there talking with the, with the other Indians, explaining the treaty, promising them goods. The Native Americans in Dakota are very quiet. They don't know what they're signing and hope to get the goods and land they're promised. And then yet there was another one to sign. And they all did so, one at a time, again. They signed the treaty and the copies, but later they were led to a third treaty, which, may, which said that they would have to pay back what they were given, and the Indians never knew. Two weeks after the Sisseton and Wapiton tribes signed the treaty at Traverse de Sioux, the Mittawakanton and Wapakuta bands signed a similar treaty at Mendota and met with a senator. Sign this. Come, sign this. But they had some other ideas. We heard what happened to the Dakota, and we're not happy about it. Sign it, or we are prepared to use force. force. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, okay. A very forceful portrayal at Mendota that day. The Native Americans felt that they that they needed to to sign, just as their brothers did. Sign. 
Nein. And the Dakota departed. By 1865, the Ojibwe had also signed treaties giving up much of their land in Minnesota and most of Iowa. And they met to come talk about the treaty. And Alexander Rams. After the Sisseton and Wapiton tribes came to sign a treaty at Traverse de Sioux. But they had some other ideas. No, we heard what you did to the Dakota. Sign it! Or we are going to shoot candy trigger stuff. What? <laughs> and that was the end of the U.S. Right on the set, action. Three, two, one. In the summer of 18... Where is everybody? Action. Past and crew have been doing a great job working on this kit. It's recording. Okay, it is recording now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then Ramsey and Henry Sibley headed up the Minnesota River to the Traverse de Sioux. Yeah.